Well, uh, holiday time, uh, people head out to restaurants, enjoy uh, good times with family and friends and holiday meals. And to find out what the latest trends in the restaurant industry are for this uh, holiday season and beyond, Mai Tai Ha is with us from Square. Mai Tai, good morning. How are you? How you doing? Thanks for having me. I think I said Mai Tai. Ming Tai, I meant. I'm sorry. I think I said Mai Tai. Uh, Colin's hey, dog. A restaurant uh, uh, specialty. Yes. <laughs> our, our producer, Colin, has a dog named Mai Tai, and we actually had the dog on the screen yesterday while we were doing the TV broadcast, too. Uh, so anyway, tell us what's the, the latest as we head out this holiday season to restaurants and what we can be expecting. Yeah, absolutely. Square, we have served thousands and thousands of restaurants, and our quarterly industry report offers insights into trends around dining, consumer spending, and wages. With this most recent report, we looked at the resurgence of downtown areas post-pandemic. Think of this as who's going out these days and where. Now, many consumers are continuing to work from home, at least part-time, uh, but demand at restaurants is, is stabilizing. We're seeing da- downtown areas across America, on average, roughly about 72% of their pre-pandemic activity as of the end of September 23. Uh, so we're not quite back to uh, pre-pandemic, but we're uh, climbing back up. In addition to that downtown recovery, our report also sheds light on wage growth trends among restaurant workers, which is crucial for understanding the broader restaurant industry dynamics around labor costs and shortages. Wage growth peaked at around 8.5% in March 2022 due to labor shortages, but a year and a half later, it's decelerated. Now, overall, wage growth is about 4.4%. Total earnings growth around 5%. Uh, in some markets, in uh, metropolitan areas like Cincinnati, Las Vegas, and Jacksonville, we're seeing above-average earnings growth. Uh, more close to the shore, we're seeing D.C., for instance, uh, actually sees lower-than-average earning growth for those restaurant workers, uh, including their wages, tips, and overtime, growing at about 4.8%, with a take-home of $17.17. Uh, $17.17. Uh, and then dining in downtown D.C. is still down about 39% compared to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, Still slow going, so hoping for a good holiday rush there. Uh, You mentioned about the tips being included in such. uh, I know when I go to even pick up food now, tips are part of the credit card line that didn't used to be there before. Even if they're not serving it to you, they're just reaching behind the counter and, and giving it to you as well. Are people tipping more than they did before the pandemic? Well, we're we're seeing that the bulk of wage growth actually is coming from wages. Uh, Well, tips rise with naturally with sort of inflation, uh, but we're seeing really the wage growth being driven by base wages. John, within the um, the industry itself, are we finding that the growth curve is about the same for fine dining and and franchises, or is one separating from the other? Yeah, we don't really see uh, much of a difference uh, in there um, in, in, in the data. We're looking at really overall across all, all markets and businesses of all sizes. Um, but we are seeing different differences by metro. Um, you know, for instance, Detroit in Michigan, you know, seeing actually the most food growth uh, in 75 percent increase since 2019. Uh, you know, this might be likely due to workers being asked nicely to return back to the office and then an influx of new restaurants and residents. Uh, also seeing like high traffic growth uh, in the areas like Los Angeles, up 18 percent, Miami, 17 percent. And then some cities like Boston are flat, uh, around 2 percent, and then Phoenix only down 8 Joe, when we uh, came out of COVID, we saw the restaurants adopt a lot of mitigation efforts to uh, ensure the safety of their their patrons and when they're dining. Uh, COVID's still with us, uh, unfortunately. Uh, have the restaurants continued with some of those mitigation efforts? And I'm talking about social distancing, having the table set further apart, maybe some barriers in place. Uh, no, between <laughs> no, is that where I go. Yeah, have you seen any of the restaurants still adopting those, or they have, they reverted back to pre-COVID days? No, look, I think um, uh, we're seeing, like, different trends across the United States when it comes to, like, where, uh, how uh, restaurants are approaching uh, the safety. I think what's important is that uh, guests want to feel really uh, uh, safe and happy, and so operators that are able to really create the most welcoming environment ultimately are the ones that are, are going to succeed. Uh, you know, there's really no substitute for good hospitality and good food in, in this business. And so I think that's what mostly operators are focusing on. What's happening in New York City? I hear, you know, record high um, vacancy rates in the office buildings and that sort of thing, which would imply that there aren't a lot of people 
left around to, to go and visit the restaurants, certainly for lunchtime and into dinner. Are, are they in trouble in New York? Yeah, so for, uh, that's interesting. So, the, you know, for instance, New York uh, definitely did not show up on our, on our list as like high, high, high performance. In fact, uh, New York is still down 42 percent uh, compared to pre-pandemic levels. And so, you know, what operators and, and these businesses have to do is really think outside the box to replace those revenues and those profits. Uh, we're seeing operators uh, really think about re- diversifying their revenue through uh, new ways, like a bakery, for instance, offering cooking classes or restaurants selling the meal kits. And, uh, you know, one of my favorites in the holiday season is wine bars setting up wine club subscriptions. Uh, an example of that, we found. 54% year-over-year growth of food and beverage uh, businesses with active buyer subscriptions as of August. That means these uh, restaurants are selling subscriptions that are creating reliable revenue stream and building customer loyalty at the same time. Uh, so, yeah, you're seeing these businesses definitely not getting the, the traditional dine-in, uh, having to find other ways to, to grow revenue. Ming Tai Ha, thank you so much for being with us. How can our listeners find out more about what we discussed today? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, learn more about uh, restaurants and, and how Square is uh, serving them at squareup.com slash restaurants. Have a great day. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you.